Hello and welcome back to another video feature of the Immersive Worlds Handbook. Today I'm talking about theming and specifically asking us and asking you to consider what makes a theme appropriate. Um, whether we are trying to theme or design a, a restaurant like the Cheesecake Factory pictured here, um, a lifestyle store, a branded super center, a theme park, or whatever you might have. So as we ask this question today, I'll be taking you through a series of venues of uh, themed um, stores, lifestyle locations, theme parks, hotels, restaurants, and many other spaces around the world to get us to, to ask some questions really in a comparative sense in terms of saying what does make a theme appropriate if you're trying to design something for the guest. Now as we look at the theme here at the Cheesecake Factory in Reno, Nevada, we see that there's a, a, a theme that's very eclectic, not unlike the menu, Egyptian, Byzantine elements in terms of the design. We'll talk about this later. One of the things you note, it's a more subtle design than uh, some of the other spaces we'll address later, including the Anhau music-themed hotel in Berlin, which is quite over the top in terms of its theme. So we'll discuss today how the context really matters in terms of what you're trying to accomplish for the guest, what you're selling, um, what you're offering in terms of services. Contrast with that subtlety, we can look at Bomberger, which is in Huntington Beach, California, the explicit theme here is bombs, and uh, we'll talk about how this connection works or perhaps doesn't work, but one of the things you might know if you've been to Huntington Beach, California is there's a lot of competition. It's a very popular place for tourists, so you're trying to stand out, and this is one way certainly to stand out. If you look at the font, as you're walking down the strip here, you can't help, uh, you can't miss this bomb that's right on the sign. So that's one of the things that reminds us about the context of the theme. In this case, there is a connection, a paralleling of hamburgers and bombs. And we'll talk about here what exactly is going on. Um, how could these metaphors uh, be connected? Um, are they connected? Or is the inappropriateness of the connection the key to the theming? We might recall as well that metaphor is a carrying across of meaning between two things, so in this case the meaning of the bomb and the burger. You can ask in your mind, is it appropriate or not? And clearly we'll discuss today this is a subjective matter in terms of saying what is appropriate. For example, the culture could dictate things that are appropriate or not in terms of those meanings. The context at hand, um, is it appropriate to theme a hamburger shop with bombs, with warfare, with a nuclear blast. The brand itself could play a role in the decision being made about the theming or the design approaches, as could certain marketing decisions that perhaps have to be made. I think as we go through this journey today, we won't uh, come to any conclusion that there's one set of meanings or approaches that works in terms of the appropriate theme at a given venue. It's clearly subjective and it'll vary from place to place, from culture to culture. If you go online right now and do a simple image search on say weird themed restaurants or extreme theming, you'll see some of the images like the ones here. Actually the Hitler's cross in the middle, I had an image of that in my book Theme Park and indeed I said it was offensive and it was inappropriate uh, because you should never theme a restaurant no matter your goals if you're trying to be sensationalist using something as offensive as Hitler and the Nazis. Now you also see uh, different themes here of restaurants with toilets, we'll talk about some of those later, and also hospital themes and even a naked theme restaurant there, um, which I believe perhaps is in uh, Sweden. I heard there's a, a series of such restaurants there. We can move beyond uh, those extreme themes and talk about something more uh, subtle here. And we're, we're talking, we'll be talking about this medical center in a second, but I want to ask you, how are the meanings expressed when you go into a themed or design restaurant, or in this case, a medical center? What's being expressed to the guests? In this case, because we're at a medical center and it's located in the Carson City area, which is near Lake Tahoe, the emphasis, the symbolism includes eagles, includes nature, and very subtle forms of design. We also should ask the question, which meanings are chosen? So in this case, we're choosing uh, meanings from nature, which fits in quite well with two things. One is the natural landscape of this region. Lake Tahoe is very beautiful, and thus nature is a part of the theming. And then secondly, it's a medical center, and I'll come back to this in a second. 
Now let's look at something quite contrasting to this. And this is the N. Howe. This is a design hotel in Berlin, Germany. And I would say the theme here is music and also coolness. Keep in mind as we take this journey today that just because you see, in this case, a guitar, an amplifier, some garish over the top color design as you could see in the rooms here. Um, it doesn't mean that that's the primary meaning, right? Symbols, if you look at the work of anthropologist Victor Turner, he would remind us that symbols have multiple points of reference and multiple points of connection to other things in the world. So we see guitars on the wall. We don't just think of music, we think of some of the associations, free spirit, creativity, excitement, and so forth. What I'm trying to suggest here is that the design approach, because it's a, a hotel, B, it has connections to Berlin, which is a very edgy and trendy city. You see the exterior design here. It's going to result in a much more over-the-top form of theming, whereas in a medical center, to jump back to the Eagle Medical Center, we're talking about subtlety and we're talking about not playing as much with some of that experimentalism that you'd see in the case of the hotel in Berlin. I should say at the same time, it's not always the case that you'll have a subtle theme in this case with, say, a medical clinic. Um, the very last bit in the Immersive Worlds Handbook, I talk about Celebration Health in Florida and uh, specifically how they use um, extreme theming or exciting theming, re-theming the MRI machines and so forth. So there are so many opportunities out there to break the mold and to be a, uh, a bit different perhaps to connect with the guests or to try to accomplish something that is uh, the goal perhaps of, of your theming, of your design approaches and so forth. And we'll actually, as we switch images here, talk about this. And this is a part of um, Riverside, California, sort of a typical uh, a strip mall. And the question I would have for you today here is what work does the theming provide? Again, if you're theming a hospital, maybe you go for something subtle, you go for something natural and not, you know, a music themed uh, hospital as compared to the hotel because you have a goal of trying to accomplish something with that design. Maybe the case is you don't want the design to d distract the guest, the visitor, from what you're doing there. The other thing we can talk about in terms of theming is there are direct and more indirect uh, effects on the guest. So, you know, think about your favorite theme park. If you're going to Pirates of the Caribbean, um, there's a direct effect on the guest there, right? You're going through a story, the theming, the queue house, the entirety of the ride itself, the, the, the action, all the characters and the voiceovers and the music really do put you in a three-dimensional space, much more direct than, say, cases of more subtlety where if you're going into a hospital, uh, there may be some design approaches there that are given to the guest, but the emphasis is not on that being the entirety of the experience because, again, in a hospital setting, the emphasis may be on healing, the emphasis is on helping the guest and not necessarily um, trying to entertain him or her throughout the course of their journey. Let's look here at a different uh, a space. The Palms apartment, Apartments in Las Vegas, Nevada. And I just you know happened to see this one time. They, they talk here in their signage about how uh, they have a historical, it's a Vegas original, uh, Mayor Oscar Goodman once lived here. You know Oscar Goodman for his uh, defense of many mob um, individuals when he was a lawyer and then eventually he became the mayor, very popular mayor of Las Vegas. And this is an interesting one for me when I think about the appropriateness. So we can start to put all these things together we've been talking about. The context, the location, clearly um, Las Vegas has a history of, you know, the mob and so forth. There's a connection there to Oscar Goodman. But I just, I wonder myself, if I were looking for an apartment, would this be what, the thing that would push me over the edge? That meaning that is connected to gangsters, at least in the sense, and you have even bullet holes in the sign, which would suggest maybe it's not the first association necessarily you want. If you're living in a place, you might be thinking about safety and not about gunfights or bullet holes as part of the sign. So I do give them credit. It's pretty over the top. It's definitely daring and, and garish in terms of the meanings of the theming design at this uh, apartment complex in Las Vegas. Well, let's leave that space and I'll show you here a collection of all things of uh, stickers. This is from the um, 
LA uh, Farmer's Market, which is a really cool space. And um, I did a video on this, so I won't say too much, but um, you can check that out at some point. But I was trying to show you with these stickers how we have certain associations in our minds when we think about theming, or not even, I should say, when we think about theming, when we think about anything in the world. So maybe we think certain things about London, it could be the underground, it could be a double-decker red bus, it could be a pub with uh, New York. We think of the Empire State Building, the Statue of Liberty, Broadway, and the idea of the Big Apple. So in some ways, this very nicely connects us to this idea that there are certain things in our minds when we think of whatever in the world, and then we can use those as designers as part of our uh, thematic approaches to creating the space that we're creating. Okay, now next I will um, draw on a bit of, um, I guess you could say theoretical information. This is from the Immersive Worlds Handbook, so you can certainly uh, check it out. And these are some uh, characteristics of theming I talk about. Uh, first, theming is highly distinctive. It uses the recognizable symbols, the ones we just talked about, say, in the example of uh, the uh, stickers. It relies on guests' previous associations with certain themes, so it could be important, like if you're doing, say, the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, think about what the guest already knows or doesn't know based on prior information. And then theming often uses a shorthand or abbreviation uh, to connect with the guest. And uh, so we can think about a variety of uh, types of theming that are out there. For example, theming could be based on place and culture, it could be based on a brand, an interest and lifestyle, or even a mood or association. And we might in fact acknowledge that all of these could be at play or multiple forms could be at play at one time. Now the other thing I do in the Immersive Worlds Handbook is have a series of tables that gives you examples of uh, each of these types of uh, approaches to theming. We won't go through all these, but the place and culture based theming as I call it. We could look at many of the uh, casinos um, on the Las Vegas Strip to think about mood and association. We might look at, we'll talk about later, the Heart Attack Grill. It's a very interesting one. Um, the Circus Circus could be the circus. There's a certain mood and connection pe that people have with circuses. Could also talk about brand-based theming. So if you go to the American Girl uh, Place store, very successful, has a lot of emphasis on its brand, Urban Outfitters, Nike Town, BMW World, the Heineken Experience in Amsterdam, and so forth. A lot of great examples of brand-based theming. And that emphasizes how important brands are in our lives. And then the last form I look at is the interest and uh, lifestyle theming. And we could talk about um, you know, a lot of sports-based um, emphases. The music one, I don't have it on here, but the En Hau in Berlin would be an example of lifestyle theming. It's, it's, it's uh, very specific, but also has a general association, as we talked about earlier in terms of music. This is a chart that looks at some of the common theme associations of more the place-based um, spaces. So the Western and the Wild West, for example, may have associations of cowboys, gunfights, and adventure. And then de the design associations would be things like saloons, rustic textures, and tumbleweed. Just examples. This is not an exhaustive list. Makes me think a little bit if you saw the Westworld uh, reboot on HBO in 2015 or 16 or so, um, they dealt with you know a lot of interesting uh, connotations that we have, say, of the Wild West. Here's a few more examples. We won't go through all these today, but you, you kind of get the point. So what I'm suggesting here is that you can parallel the concepts that we have in our minds about what these places or mythical periods, if we will, uh, these thematic periods are like, and then we can connect those to some specific design associations. This next uh, set of two images is from Moreno Valley College. I did a visit there years ago for a different purpose, but I was uh, excited to see that students had themed, um, you know, using uh, looking at uh, Greek and Roman myths and gods, and they actually did a thematic design of one of the uh, student meeting rooms, which I thought was cool. And it's cool because we can look at what people have in their minds when they think about theming their own spaces. And I'm not going to get into it in this uh, video, but think about how people theme their homes, their bathrooms with all sorts of uh, personal items and so forth. The next space here is called the Farmhouse Motel. 
in Riverside, California. The theme here is the farm, as you might guess. Now, you remember earlier I had a strip mall in Riverside. This is, I don't know if I have video of it, we'll find out in just a second. Uh, but to the left of this is that strip mall, and then you see this motel. Now this, as you might gather, is, is boarded up and no longer in business. I think I took a very short video, a short shaky video. That was pretty short, actually. So, uh, But this is an earlier uh, postcard, and I guess at one point it used to be a much more charming sort of place. Uh, went out of business, and one of the things maybe that you might recall with this is that um, times change, and so in some cases the theme has to change as well. And we'll talk about this interesting issue a little bit later in this video. So I have to uh, disclose something to you here. I was in the middle of uh, doing the voiceover here of the farmhouse motel in Riverside and it occurred to me there is a great um, farm theme hotel and this is actually in Southern California right near across from the Alley's Farmer, Farmer's Market that I mentioned earlier. So this is an example, it's called The Farmer's Daughter. It's really brilliantly themed. It's one of my favorite uh, design hotels that I can think of. So if you're in Southern California you can check out The Farmer's Daughter. So this reminds us I think that context matters and by all means your design budget matters. Compare these images with the image of that uh, less fortunate motel that closed in, in Riverside, California. So speaking of other motels, I wanted to show you here, this is called the Whistle Stop Inn uh, in Carson City, Nevada, very close to where I live. And I've been trying to figure out the theme here, uh, trains and, and clowns. Um, this hotel is actually, I think, up for sale the last time I checked. Some of this video will be uh, rather shaky. I just kind of stopped one day and I was like, I have to get some video of the clown motel. Um, there's a lot going on here. There's like cowboys, looks like gun smoke maybe, uh, or bonanza, I can't tell right there on the left. But th this here, I, I always, when I pass this um, motel, and I still do, driving in Carson City on uh, Carson Street on 395, I've always thought like, you know, what the heck? What, what is going on here with this um, display, right? I mean, you look at the dolls and stuff. Reminds me a little bit of the Clown Motel down near Vegas, which I think in 2017 just went up for sale. So if you're in, uh, if you're interested in purchasing a Clown Motel, there are two available, both in, in Nevada. Uh, this is not as extensively clown themed as the one near Las Vegas that actually gets a lot of people stopping there just because of the eclecticism of the theme. And that's a reminder to us today is to say that, you know, the theme doesn't always have to connect. Uh, it may not result in success. Again, I don't think this particular motel was successful, but it could offer an opportunity to uh, really reach out to the guest and to stand out from the crowd, as I mentioned with Bomberger and Huntington Beach earlier. You can see here it's for rent, um, giving them a little bit of free advertising. Foghorn, Leghorn, I don't really get, uh, you know, the, some of the theming here. But, you know, I have to say, that's okay, right? I mean, in some cases, you see something like this, uh, and and you're you're reminded of just how eclectic it is, and uh, that itself, I think, is, is very uh, interesting, you know, in and of itself. And it also makes me think of uh, down in uh, Southern California, which uh, I'm going to have to show you some images now since I mentioned it. I have to say, as I'm doing this video, I'm constantly stopping my voiceover and calling through Flickr and downloading more images and putting them in, in Final Cut Pro because uh, it just uh, makes me recall some of these places around the world that I've visited that offer you some uh, it, you know, insights about this issue of the appropriateness of themes today. Okay, so here we are, as promised. The first one is Juan Pollo's um, McDonald's Tribute Museum uh, down in San Bernardino, California. And then the second is their uh, Route 66 uh, theme museum, which is part of the uh, chicken restaurant just uh, to the right of where you get your uh, delicious chicken. Um, let's jump to something totally different. Let's go to Berlin. I'll take you through a few spaces here. Berlin is one of my top cities for any kind of design or theming or aesthetics. This is called the VU store. It's a concept store. And what I'm trying to ask you today as a question, and I hope you will offer some of your uh, feedback in the comments or send me an email. The question here is, is, is there a theme here? Or is there a lack of theme? And of course, this gets kind of meta and existential. Does a lack of theme suggest a theme itself? I'll show you in just a bit. Um, 
some of the uh, design sensibilities, or rather I should say the lifestyle sensibilities that are uh, a part of the store. Um, it, it's very sparse, it's minimalistic. There's something really to me exciting and captivating, uh, captivating about this space. I mean, it's unlike a lot of spaces around the world, right? There's nothing glossy about it. There's, I would say there's a subtlety in its minimalism, but it's also, I think, quite um, interesting in terms of what they're doing with some of this uh, uh, design. And now let's look at this here. Uh, it's talking a little bit about um, the concept of the store, talking about the selection of local and international designers and products, exploration of modern design, visual culture, and the future of luxury retail. And they also have a, a companion uh, coffee place next door actually called Companion Coffee, so it's a literal companion, <laughs> um, and it further complements the retail experience um, in its own offerings. Uh, markedly unique, the Vu store continues to set itself apart as a concept because of its fashion, its books and magazines. It's cohesive across its physical store and online presence. It has a foresight, it has inspiration, and it's cared for by a dedicated team of creatives and industry professionals. Very interesting to think about. Um, so I guess the question becomes, you know, again, is this a theme or is it not a theme in terms of what it's trying to offer to the guest? Okay, we'll stay in Berlin. And this is, um, I put here a space. I don't know the name of it. It's in Berlin. I visited it and I'm not sure of the theme. Um, I took part in a um, uh, subcultures tour by, um, I believe they're called Alternative Tours Berlin. And this is one of the spaces we visited. A lot of our tour focused on the amazing graffiti. Um, this had a sign above and it said basically it was a uh, impromptu studio and you could be interviewed at any time. I mean, it's just so very Berlin. If you've been to Berlin, you know what I'm talking about. This next thing is cool. It's sort of, I guess, a pop-up. It's inside these um, shipping containers. And I just love what they did with the signage here. Um, this is a you know, a coffee shop, but you can see from the sign here, right, there's not a lot of attention given to creating, say, um, a super over-the-top, um, you know, sign. And, and I think what's exciting to me about this is the fact that they've chosen uh, something, you know, so different here, right? If you make a homemade sign, that says something to a guest, right? That says something quite different than maybe what you'd expect to see, say if you go into a Starbucks and everything is so perfect and glossy and so forth. So I offer this um, series of spaces on the subculture tour to suggest to you that, um, again, the context of where you're at uh, matters. Um, the guest has, you know, expectations, I think, going to Berlin um, because of Berlin, it's trendiness, it's edginess and so forth. Um, so totally different here. Let's go to a Hampton Inn. This is in uh, Southern California near Vacaville. And I'm talking here that the theme sometimes is very present, like in the case of the Inn How. In this case, it's more design. And this is a series of two things. It's a series of texts that you'll find, like in this case in the workout center, the gym, clear your mind. And there's also a series of, I think, fairly subtle um, images. And each of these images is different. Um, given the room numbers and I took you know photos of, of a series of these so this is an example where when we're studying theming I should be saying when we're studying design not every space we're looking at today even though we're asking what's appropriate in terms of a theme not every space is a say a pure theme space this is more what I call a design space right there is attention to symbolism there is attention to detail some of the um, the uh, plaques with the signage that they have throughout the hotel, I think, convey a sense of welcomeness to the guest. But these images here, right, really don't matter. I mean, it's a design approach, but it's not specific to where you're staying or what you're doing at the hotel. Very different if we go to the Las Vegas Strip, when we go to the Paris, the New York, New York, and so forth. So something to remember. You can see here in the elevator, and this is the last image I'll, I'll show you of the Hampton Inn, but uh, it says selfie and it has a, a picture of a dog, right? So it's kind of cute and so forth. Uh, we'll jump back to Berlin again. You can see I like Berlin a lot. This is the Hollywood Media uh, Hotel. The theme, I don't have to tell you, it's Hollywood. 
Um, and now, when I take you through these venues today, I, I'm you know I'm not trying to say one is better than the other. I'm not trying to critique their theme. I'm just trying to really show you as a social scientist what I think of these themes and maybe what they allow for the guest. So I would say in the case of this hotel, and I just went in just to explore it. I didn't actually stay there, so I don't know what the rooms look like. Limited information. Um, the theme is Hollywood, so you could say the glamour of Hollywood, Monroe, Hitchcock. Um, you know, um, all the various John Wayne, all the various iconic figures. And so when we look at these icons of Hollywood, um, we certainly have associations in our mind. But this is one of the, the issues I have with this um, hotel here is, you know, what does this do for the guests? Does it give them an escape? Now, again, I haven't been to the room, so I couldn't tell you. But just judging from the lobby, um, there is, you know, it, it seems to be more focused on very static forms of decor, material culture, a lot of posters and so forth, and maybe not on um, what you see contrastingly with the and how, right? The music theme there is developed in multiple senses. I didn't show you some of those, but they even had um, elevators that had different music based on the guest uh, preference. So I wanted to offer that today as we think about some of these issues. Now, going back to some of the outlandish themes, this is the Magic Restroom Cafe formerly located in City of Industry, California. The theme is toilets. Um, if you know anything about, um, in, in many Asian cultures, these can be very popular themes. And uh, this particular restaurant, I remember I lived for a short period in Southern California. When this restaurant opened, I said to my wife, we have to go there because I don't know how long they'll be open. And indeed, I think they lasted only about six months. And it raises a question today then about the appropriateness of the theme. Does this work in the United States and American culture uh, if it works well in other Asian cultures? Another example, the Heart Attack Grill, Las Vegas, Nevada. The theme is medicine, obesity, and unhealth, which is not really a word. Um, if you've read my other work or looked at my other videos about this space as well, uh, you know that I've, I've have a lot to say about this very interesting uh, restaurant located on Fremont Street um, in the Las Vegas, uh, Nevada area, just to the north of the Strip. And it raises questions about, in this case, you know, should we be celebrating the kinds of things that uh, the, the owner of the restaurant is celebrating. So something for you to think about. Let's jump to Southern California, Yermo, um, Peggy Sue's 50s Diner. The theme is two things, uh, the 1950s and dinosaurs. This is not unlike Bomberger earlier where I, when I visited the space, I was primarily interested in the eclecticism of it. You know, I get the 50s. I think if you're doing a diner, it could be cliched and, and overdetermined, but sometimes, you know, it's still a period of time that we have fond memories of. And you think of malts and shakes and jukeboxes and the kind of uh, stuff that, you know, you would wear in a, in a 50s diner. Now, the thing you don't think about, I think, is the dinosaur side of things. Um, and you can look this up online, look up the history. I'm just drawing a blank a little bit about um, the reason for the connection here. A lot of times with um, restaurants like this or places like this, maybe someone um, buys a site from someone and then they have some of the decor already there. So just for me visiting this particular diner, my main question was, you know, how can I associate or why should I associate dinosaurs and um, you know, the 50s. I will say it was pretty cool walking around, taking a look at it, um, gawking at all the dinosaurs throughout this very, it's a, it's a really big space. So if you're down there, you could certainly uh, check it out. Okay, now as I was thinking about dinosaurs and 50s diners, I started thinking about aliens and beef jerky. So if you go to Southern California, there is the alien fresh uh, jerky. Um, shop, restaurant, I guess you could call it. And what's interesting is is if you look below there, those bottom images, they try doing a uh, crowdsourcing effort to create their own uh, hotel, also based on this alien theme. Unfortunately, it didn't get the funding they were looking at. So it's another reminder maybe of these contexts that we're talking about today, what's appropriate for a, even a type of space. Now jumping to Orlando, we'll, we'll talk here about the contrast between design as storytelling Paris, Las Vegas, think, telling the theme, using the theme to tell the story, and then design as design. Now, Orlando has many spaces, um, certainly that are 
uh, the first type, design of storytelling, right? Universal Studios, Disneyland, or Di- sorry, Walt Disney World, Disneyland's in California, um, that use theming to tell a story. Um, the Harry Potter uh, stuff happening at Universal is a key indicator of this. But the other side of it would be these gift shops, right? Design is pure design. It's to attract our attention. It's this type of architecture that was very common in Roadside America. If you read the great Roadside America architecture books, they talk about this very type of architecture. It's designed to captivate us, and thus the emphasis is not on telling a story, but on using symbols and design to get us to look at something that's unique and interesting. Jumping to the Whitney Peak Hotel in Reno, Nevada, the theme here is the Sierras, and it features the world's tallest climbing wall at 164 feet. Um, my video might be a little shaky. I was trying to call through my footage, and I found what I could. I apologize for this, but you'll get, I think, the main idea. And I'll show you some um, images I found also um, on their website. So th- this um, particular part of Reno has been redeveloped over time, and it was cool to see the Whitney Peak, which is a boutique design hotel, open up. You see just how massive um, uh, the climbing wall is there. And uh, the question I have for you today about the Whitney Peak is, is one key feature a theme? Is that enough? Does that constitute enough for the guest to establish your identity? I think from what I've seen so far, I think the answer could be yes here. Um, this is uh, from their website, and it shows you the size of their um, gym. And on the interior, they have additional boulders that guests can climb, which would be kind of cool for me if I didn't want to climb the super high one. I could go and try out one of these. And this shows you some of the uh, room, uh, the theme here, a, a bit of nature, and also Reno, the bridge there. And then on the left is uh, you know, the, the landscape of the mountains. Pretty cool themed hotel. Um, now, in some cases, I might say the theme doesn't make a difference. So this is, I don't even know where it is. I have so many folders on Flickr that are just called theming. And I've, I've always wanted to use some of these, and you're, I'm subjecting you to my, my images so you can uh, look at some of these today. But this is a, a roadside stop. It's a pawn shop, and it has, um, it, I will tell you, it's. I don't think it's in Las Vegas. I'm pretty cer- certain of this. But it has Vegas theming, um, casinos, and, and so forth. But it doesn't really make a difference, right? because you're not going to convey maybe anything Vegas-like at a pawn shop. Let's jump to the Hyatt Regency, Lake Tahoe Resort, Incline Village, Nevada, theme, Lake Tahoe, and the outdoors. This is one where I wanted to include it because there's very much subtlety going on here. Um, It's a pretty historic hotel. It's changed hands over the years. Um, Back in the day, it actually had a a much more uh, over-the-top theme. I think it was like a Roman theme, if if I'm not... uh, if I'm incorrect, please let me know in the comments. I didn't have a chance to research that. So this shows you some of the uh, inside of the hotel. This is really about um, the decor, um, the textures, the wood grains. The images are very subtle. There's not a lot of loud stuff going on here, say edgy, like the N. Howe in Berlin, Germany, as we saw earlier. And this is appropriate, right? Because Lake Tahoe, I think, is known more for its subtlety. The casinos, even some of the designs because of the TRPA, the Tahoe Regional Planning Agency, have been forced to be a little more subdued. And I've, I've said this in the past, probably locals don't like when I say it, but I've always wished that actually the casinos that you see at Stateline had uh, a, a little more garish themes. I think I think it be, could be pretty cool. But in this case, given where it is, there's a very small casino uh, on the ground fo- floor. The emphasis is on more of the subtlety, the design. The wood textures fit in very well with the fact that the landscape around the hotel in Lake Tahoe is beautiful, is known for the snow, as you see here. So subtlety is the order of the day, not anything over the top. The emphasis is on creating mood some association but not too much it's very restrained design it's again to be contrasted with say any of the themed hotels on the vegas strip although some of that is changing and i'll have to save that for another video because i do not want to add more images in here of uh of the vegas strip but uh, what i was saying here is it's appropriate for the context because the context is lake tahoe sports the outdoors hiking skiing backpacking, camping, all that kind of stuff. And so it's a very appropriate to where you are. This is a shot of outside of the room. So you can see that they've maintained the theme um, in the hallways. And these are very creaky hallways, by the way. Not that that matters, but it's just a, a memory I have of it. This is a, a long shot of that same hallway. So I think what you see here today as we're talking about appropriate themes, there's no one theme that's appropriate for 
any given context. And I, I should have had a graphic for this, but basically what I would offer to you here is there's probably a sliding scale between subtlety and nuance and more over the top and the level of detail, or I should say the, the types of symbols and how those symbols convey over something to the design approaches, right? You, you wouldn't have the same kind of design at the Enhau in Berlin, Germany. Totally, totally would not work. Very subtle here, referencing of the lake with these uh, very uh, vintage looking uh, throw pillows on one of the benches uh, in the lobby. So it's a good reminder to look at all aspects of theme spaces. If you're going out to study this stuff and you're doing a project as a student, consider this. People make a mistake when they study theming, they jump immediately to, you know, a place like the Paris Las Vegas. Well, appropriate enough, we'll jump to, um, back to the uh, Las Vegas Strip. And I'm taking you to the Strip here because um, you may be following this in the news. Um, the expected opening date now is uh, 2020. This will be the next great theme casino on the Strip. This was the will be the site of the former Echelon, which failed as a project. This is called Resorts World, and if you know Resorts World, um, they're great space in, in Singapore, Universal Studios uh, there, the, the big space. You can check out my video on that. They're building this massive casino. I've heard estimates between 5 and $7.2 billion. Just astonishing. Two things to mention about the casino and why I included here today. One, it will represent a return to um, place-based theming or culture-based theming. Uh, it, you know, we've moved away from some of that theming from the um, the boom of the 1990s into the 2000s to what we have at City Center and uh, de-theming, going towards more less of the place-based theming and more towards the just pure design approaches, which is going to happen soon uh, in the next two years or so um, with the Monte Carlo will be shifted into a boutique hotel rebranded as um, Park MGM. So quite a, a different sort of feel there. So uh, the, the first significance I mentioned with this uh, new hotel in Vegas, this Asian-themed hotel, will be the fact that it's place-based. And of course, its price is also astronomical. It's uh, capital going into it. Second is the fact that the um, opening has been delayed because they did some marketing and they determined that the original design, which was to focus on uh, more Beijing place-based theming, is going to shift to more Shanghai. And they were concerned about not attracting enough younger clientele to the casino. So it's an insight today to remember that if we're theming, we have to think about that appropriate may change over time. And, and this is a great case of really jumping on top, being on top of it and saying we need to change the design before we go ahead with the construction. So it's a reminder today here looking at this latest, what will be a, the latest uh, place-based casino on the Las Vegas Strip. Okay, so let's totally shift gears here, and I want to talk about maybe inappropriate themes. And this is in Placerville, California, which is just, uh, if you drive between Lake Tahoe and Sacramento, you come across Placerville. Pa Placerville is a really quaint community. Um, a lot of cool shops. It's changed radically over the years. You certainly, certainly check it out. There's a lot of great cafes and coffee shops. But here's one thing that I think is not appropriate, and if you Google this, um, you know, Placerville had lynchings or hangings uh, in its historical period, periods. And um, so this is part of the downtown. And I heard that this particular figure, and he has a name, I'm not sure his name, but you can look it up. He was stolen and then returned, and they decided against, I guess, once he was returned, they would put um, the dummy back up and, and show this. And I say it's inappropriate today. And I'm not arguing for censorship, but I would say that if you think about some of the racial politics of lynching and it, that, that brutal history, um, if you think about even racial politics today, and again, you can make some assessments about who this person is supposed to represent in terms of their race or ethnicity. But even beyond the politics of this, if I'm trying to brand my community, and I have families coming in and I have kids coming in. Do I really want this to be one of the first things that they see when they come into the community? If I was running a haunted house, if I was doing something with The Walking Dead, as there'll be a new uh, Walking Dead experience in uh, Fremont Street opening up in uh, 2017 or so, um, I could understand this, but I probably don't want a corpse, albeit a dummy, hanging right in this brutal sense in the downtown. So I'm getting a little political here, but I think it's it's important to think about that 
theming can also extend, symbolism and design can also extend to place-based approaches. And what um, is represented to the guest here, I think says something about what you're trying to provide them or your own identity. So it's a lesson perhaps for the future. Okay, and now let's talk about a bit more of the uh, theoretical information. This is from the Reader in Themed Immersive Spaces, which you can download free of charge online, so check that out. This first table is referring to the modes of theming and immersion. So obviously we can look at architecture and realize that architecture has an opportunity to uh, connect us to places, brands, or other contexts, as does the material culture design. Um, what we see on the inside, such as that hotel in Lake Tahoe, the Hyatt, uh, was an example of this. There's also, of course, narrative, and that could be the text or the backstory that allows us to uh, express to the guests what the space is all about. So, for example, if you go to the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, there's a lot of text and backstory available to the guest, and some of that is actually brought with them uh, prior to their visit to the space. Um, we can also talk about technology, the various technological forms that could allow us to increase the immersion, increase the theming of the guests. I mentioned earlier that if you have a very uh, a hotel that has static design to it and you really want to engage, envelop, immerse the guests within that space, you might have to look at technology for doing some of this. If you looked at my review of both the Creation Museum and the Ark Encounter, of uh, Answers in Genesis, I made the critique that they don't use enough technology to immerse guests in the space. And of course, technology costs, but it, it can have incredible uh, dividends or payoffs in terms of your guest uh, ability to become part of that space and to connect with it. There's also performance, so if you go to uh, the Venetian in Las Vegas and you ride on the gondola and you uh, hear the gondoliers in their uh, Italian singing and, and speaking and so forth, that's a form of performance that creates theming and immersion for the guest. And then lastly is the guest role or drive, and this would refer to how guests uh, themselves respond to the uh, give you feedback about the theming or immersion that they experience within your themed or immersive space. The next table suggest the various locations of theming and immersion. So I won't go through all these, but obviously we have everything ranging from a theme park, uh, the World Exposition, which was very formative or influential in terms of some of the theme parks of today, um, theme restaurants and bars, lifestyle stores, branded spaces, cruise ships, and, and so forth. And I think what would be interesting, if you're doing a project on this, if you're a student and you want to uh, look at some of this in more depth, I think it would be interesting to make some comparisons, expand what I've talked about today, and ask yourself some questions about what theming works, what theming is appropriate, say, on a cruise ship, but not in a casino, or vice versa, in a cruise ship, or in a casino and not on a cruise ship. So this would be interesting to look at. You could contrast the museums with the theme parks in terms of the issue of appropriateness. I've talked about this in some of my work. As you get to the bottom there, it gets interesting. I haven't researched a lot of these, but immersive performance space like Cirque du Soleil, virtual spaces like Second Life, not really around anymore, but you know, performative video games. And then the last one would be effective and subcultural theme communities. These would be um, communities of reenactors or people who put on performances that get into what I call lived theming, where the appropriateness of the theme is based on perhaps the psychological desires or intentions of the guest who is acting out the theme in some of these um, immersive senses. So it's a lot to think about there in the future. And the next table here is the source material of theming and immersion. So we've talked about some of these today, but we can go through them. Nature, culture, place, a, a famous place or city like the Paris Las Vegas, a time period, you might see this like ancient Egypt at the Luxor, a person, the example of say Dollywood using a famous singer to brand your space, um, a famous brand like BMW World would be a great example of this, uh, lifestyle, we could talk about the outdoors at, say, Bass Pro Shops Outdoor World, a cultural forum such as music, if you recall my uh, discussion earlier of the En Hao in Berlin, um, a media franchise such as Star Wars, um, their theming that they're going to be doing at their theme parks coming up at Disney, uh, a trope like time itself, and then the meta level, which could be the Simpsons ride at Universal, which references theme parks themselves. And then lastly, we have the dimensions of theming, which could range from, say, the represent representational to the more abstract, 
the more conventional to the more postmodern. So leaving those uh, charts and tables behind, we'll look at another space here. This is the Alibaba Motel, Costa Mesa, California, Arabian theme. If you're driving down actually to Huntington Beach, I mentioned earlier, you will probably come across this depending on the direction you're coming from. So I wanted to offer this. Um, it's, it's pretty iconic. I think a lot of people know about this motel. Um, you can read some of the reviews on Yelp. You can look at it and, and, and make your own decisions. Again, I'm not trying to pass judgment on spaces today. I'm trying to look at them in a very academic sense. My question to you today about theming is, what does the theming point to? Okay, so it's a little abstract, but in other words, if I go to this motel, what does it say? Does it reference the Arabian theme or does it point to some other things? And this is one of my concerns with theming today is I think sometimes designers haven't thought about the fact that the theming can accomplish things for you in a positive sense. It can also um, have negative consequences because maybe the guest sees it and thinks about something besides the theme itself. And I'm being a little bit obscure here. Um, because I don't necessarily want to you know, critique these spaces, and that's not the goal of my video today. But here's an interesting uh, point um, in the LA Times that um, there was some scrutiny uh, concerns about some of the you know cleanliness at, at, at the motel, and this was, this was brought up uh, in an LA Times story. Um, now let me shift to this uh, issue of theming becoming perhaps too generic. And what I mean by this is if you look at a lot of airports, um, you often uh, discover that um, you know the theming maybe takes a backseat or perhaps they haven't thought clearly about what they're trying to theme. So you see a lot of, I would say, very generalized sports cafes in airports in particular. You can ask yourself, why is that the case? But I, I guess I wonder, do they really need it? I mean, if you want to show um, sports memorabilia to a guest or something like this, you could take it up a notch here, perhaps at a place like this, the PBA Tour Grill. But even a space like this, I think, has the potential maybe to lose something in translation, if, if that sounds maybe a little bit too abstract. But what I'm trying to say is that sometimes the theme doesn't go far enough. Um, I've noticed also there's um, in airports CNBC stores, Today Show stores, NBC stores, and I discovered something. I don't have images of these, but as I noted them over a few different airports, they all were very similar. The only difference was you just substitute MSNBC with CNBC with NBC with the Today Show. So my concern is the theming could become too generic if it's that translatable across different stations or brands. Now let's talk a little bit here. This is an old image, one of my historic images, 35 millimeter uh, of the Vegas Strip. And the concern I have here is talking about re-theming. And I'm specifically looking at here, or asking you to look at, um, what happens when a, uh, a theme venue loses some of its uh, spunk, if you will, its excitement with the guest. Um, does that mean it's no longer appropriate? It doesn't mean that that's always the case, but it could be. So um, you see here the Aladdin was revived from an earlier form and was given some, I, th I think, pretty interesting theming. It didn't last long. You see some of the exterior theming. Um, I think on the inside maybe there wasn't enough nuance and detail and depth. The scale of some of the design on the inside wasn't, I think, maybe you know, perfect. Now what happened was it was rethemed as the Planet Hollywood. And so I think it'd be an interesting study if you're a student and you want to look at some of this, ask yourself questions about how this retheming occurs. This is still the actually this is the Planet Hollywood, but they kept um, some of the atmospheric theming that you note um, on the inside of uh, the uh, Miracle Mile uh, mall there. Um, and actually this is uh, next we're, we're looking at the Monte Carlo and there's the old boardwalk there which is always a fun casino to look at. Um, in a sense the theming maybe becomes obsolete and so we have to re-theme. Um, in the future, I'll talk more about why place-based theming is maybe um, uh, having its downfall on the strip. But the Monte Carlo is the latest uh, that is going to be rethemed into the uh, Park MGM. They're going to open a giant Mario Batali uh, Italy uh, restaurant. It looks really incredible, actually. Part of that new exciting park uh, area that I'm going to be checking out uh, shortly in in 2017. So this is you know a sign of of the future. So. Uh, we have to ask questions in this case, you know, will this new theme be any more appropriate than the old one? And what are some of the reasons for that? It, it really does depend on the guest. Um, in the future, I'll be offering you a video called uh, something like Goodbye Monte Carlo or Goodbye to the Monte Carlo because it's a, 
you know, I think always a bit bittersweet when we leave a theme like this, when we see it go. And, uh, uh, you know, it's a chance, I guess, in 2017 and July or August to still visit it if you want to. So uh, a reflection here on the end of a theme as we think about today, the appropriateness of, of themes. So I hope you enjoyed this video feature today on what is an appropriate theme. And please do come back for additional video features of the Immersive Worlds Handbook.